So I'm Paris Wallace, uh, and I am here because uh, I built a career um, using data to help people uh, be healthier, specifically women who are trying to conceive and who are pregnant. Uh, my first company, Good Start Genetics, uh, used, uses genetic information to help women identify whether or not they're at risk of passing on a rare genetic disorder, uh, and uses algorithms, essentially, to understand genetic information better. And Ovuline, it was, as it was mentioned, uses data to help women conceive naturally and have healthier pregnancies. Uh, we have two apps, Ovia Fertility, Ovia Pregnancy, uh, and essentially um, women share their information and they get real-time feedback based on clinical guidelines and machine learning about what they can do to conceive faster or have a healthier pregnancy and alerts them if they have some sort of acute medical issue. And today, uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, our view on consumer health and quantified health and where we see that market going. So quantified health is coming, and mobile health is coming one way uh, or another. You can see these statistics behind me show that both the healthcare system as well as uh, individual patients and consumers are really interested in this type of technology. And I think there's two trends that are really driving this. Uh, the first is... Uh, in the innovation space, uh, whereas in the past, a lot of innovations have really been focused around um, improving patient outcomes. Uh, recently, uh, that's really shifted, and you see the innovations coming around uh, reducing cost or complexity within the system. And you've seen a proliferation of apps and technologies that have come out that shift uh, healthcare from high cost personal interventions to lower cost data driven and technology uh, interventions. The second trend that's really pushing this forward is uh, more and more cost being shifted to the consumer. And this is empowering the consumer to make health decisions and looking for data to be able to make better decisions themselves as they start directing their own healthcare. Uh, so what, is this, what does this mean um, specifically for quantified health? Well, this means that this data that's now in its infancy is now really being sold directly to consumers, uh, and, it's very, oh, and it's very descriptive. So essentially telling you how many steps you've taken or how well you're sleeping is slowly but surely going to become more prescriptive, so able to interpret that, uh, that, anal uh, the, that data that it's getting and turning it into things that will allow people to actually make their own health decisions and also, that will be the data that will drive the healthcare system, um, and doctors and the healthcare system will start making, uh, making decisions based upon this data. And why this is important um, is ultimately because we're going to have a shift to cons consumer facing um, and consumer driven healthcare, which is going to radically change the cost structure um, and change and, and create huge opportunities for, for startups in this space. So Ovuline is, is, is dabbling and trying to become the platform to enable uh, many of these things. And we'll go through this um, just quickly and, oh, uh, and specifically talk about how communication is currently going on with each of the major players in the healthcare system. So you have patients. Right now, patients have two options. They can schedule their annual appointment with their doctor and get, you know, three to 10 minutes to get all their questions answered. Um, or alternatively, they can go on Google and WebMD and through their own deductive reasoning, try to figure out if the pain in their stomach is cancer or they ate a big burrito. Um, and ultimately, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, and they are really struggling to get the answers they need. Companies down here, um, like us or, or like uh, especially in fertility space, have no access to patients. So they rely on expensive sales forces to talk to providers who hopefully will educate their patients during the aforementioned three to 10 minutes that they have with those patients to sell. And millions of dollars are being spent um, here. Providers have no way to continuously monitor their patients, and often they're only seeing patients when they're so sick I had to go to the doctor. And lastly, there's payers who are only learning about uh, their patients. A great example is uh, pregnancy. A payer learns that you're pregnant when it gets your claims data uh, around your delivery, right? So there's no way to monitor patients. So what we've tried to do and where we think healthcare is going is having this layer in between. And that's continuously collecting patients' data 
um, turning it into, uh, analyzing it, and turning it into usable advice and information that can benefit everyone else uh, around this circle. So what does this look like? I mean, it's, it's Ovuline in your pocket that you're communicating with uh, every day. Our average user is sharing about 250 data points per month. And we give them real-time feedback about what they can do to conceive faster. Um, also, based upon this data we're getting, we identify uh, certain medical needs that they have. And we connect them directly with companies. So for example, we work with a company that needs to identify uh, women who are 35 or older and have a history of chromosomal or genetic abnormalities. Up until now, they've had a direct-to-doctor uh, sales force. Um, but we're actually able to connect those folks in the fifth week of pregnancy uh, with this company that can educate them about their product. We've seen huge conversion rates through there because they actually are communicating directly with the, with the, uh, the patient. Uh, on the provider side uh, and the payer side, we're building out a platform that will allow uh, providers and payers to monitor their patient's health in real time um, and intervene and do these things in a, in a much more scalable way that doesn't involve a person-to-person -person interaction. So this allows providers to ensure that uh, if someone's symptoms go out of whack, they can actually intervene. Um, and it also allows uh, providers uh, to uh, see more patients, right? Because if it's less person-to-person, -person, they have more bandwidth to see more patients. And payers are actually really interested in intervening um, uh, intervening if there's some sort of acute medical issue to avoid costs. And you know, it's a data-driven, incredibly scalable system with zero marginal cost. So if you have 10 people, if you have a million people, it just works and it runs and there's an incredible amount of value that can be created. Um, so what does this look like? Well, here's what happens at Ovuline uh, every hour. Um, we have 70 new people sign up for our apps. Uh, we, 20 people are reporting pregnancy. Um, our users are reporting 15,000 data points, and that's both what's going on with them that day and also facts about their medical history. Uh, we're letting two users know that the symptoms that they've reported, uh, according to the clinical guidelines, may be, may be a sign of an acute medical disorder, telling that they should talk to their doctor. Uh, we're, we're identifying 15 women as being infertile and referring them to fertility physicians. And lastly, we're delivering th over 300 articles that give women specific advice based upon the symptoms they've shared. So they're learning about what's going on with them, getting smarter, and acting based upon our advice. And this is something, right, this, this is not happening in, you know, for the average one doctor every hour. Um, they're lucky to see you know, a few patients. So this scalable system is working, and we're actually having people engage and having that two-way conversation with our users. And just to show how fast this is, this is coming, right? So uh, in the fertility space, it took 40 years to get to 60,000 pregnancies, which is a number of IVF babies last year. Uh, and with us, we've been around for 18 months, and we've had 60,000 pregnancies reported. And this is obviously a coincidence, but it shows that with this sort of cheap uh, technology that's incredibly powerful, um, it's going to grow and change the way that, that medicine is practiced uh, in an unfathomably short amount of time that's absolutely unprecedented in the market. Thank you. Ready for questions? Uh, yeah, so we are available in pretty much every English-speaking country. And we've seen pretty wide adoption in non-English speaking countries as well. So for the fertility clinic, it's only in the US right now. Yeah, but we identify uh, symptoms and signs of infertility for all people. Yeah, so the average user uh, who's reporting pregnancy is doing so 60 days uh, after signing up. Um, and then about 50% of those users, um, when they report pregnancy, are immediately signing up for our pregnancy product and using that for the next nine months. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, of the users that we have identified as being infertile, about 10% um, end up using the app and reporting uh, that they have become pregnant. 
Um, we've done some statistical analysis on probabilities of reporting pregnancy within our system. There's, a, there's actually a specific equation to figure that out, like how, how likely is a specific population. So we think that about 50% of people who get pregnant using our platform are actually reporting it. So it's more likely, you know, like 20%. And that's, you know, part of it is the efficacy of our platform. Part of it, too, though, is just that education. I mean, people really understanding uh, their natural cycles and being able to uh, use that to, to do the right thing at the right time um, has shown you know, really positive results. In fact, there's an a, a infertility and sterility article that suggests that 40% of folks that undergo IVF are really subfertile, not infertile, and could get pregnant naturally if they, uh, if they knew wh when they were ovulating. Yeah, so essentially we, we follow the ASRM guidelines um, exactly. So it's uh, age, time trying, as well as specific medical conditions like PCOS, endometriosis, or recurrent pregnancy loss um, that tag that person as being infertile in our system. Yeah, it's, it's both. Um, so some people identify it, other people we look at what they're entering, when they're entering it, um, and then we look for specific signs that would suggest that they had PCOS and endometriosis. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's totally free. I mean, we see a tremendous amount of value in the data. Um, so essentially, uh, as people, uh, as, as we create these insights into our users uh, and we make recommendations based upon their unique data set uh, for specific partners. So for example, um, we partner with fertility clinics. And when we identify an infertile user, um, those fertility clinics are actually willing to pay us to market to, the, to that user. But one of the things important about that is uh, it's, it's worked out really well, is that our users actually see our revenue model as a benefit of the application. Um, so when we tell someone, hey, based upon your data, it looks like you have an infertility issue, and would you be interested in meeting with a doctor who can help you in your area? They're like, this is the best thing ever. I would have never figured this out by myself. And now I'm connected with the top doctor in my area You know, the next day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and that's actually a revenue model. And that's true for a, a lot of different, um, different things that we are referring to. So uh, not at this point. I mean, that's definitely something we'd be interested in exploring. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, kind of the way we look at it, we're a fertility company, not an infertility company. So once we identify someone as infertile, uh, we can't really help them very much anymore. So, and they're just at the beginning of their process, so they don't have a medical diagnosis. They don't know what's going on. So the first step and the one that we facilitate is them connecting with a doctor, um, so that they can actually get the diagnostic testing that would suggest that that there's uh, actually an issue there, um, and then from there they kind of get into the to the world that many of us uh, in the room today work in. Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, what we're building, and it, it suggested in, in this in the slide, is really creating this platform that allows all of the key stakeholders within healthcare to communicate and have basically data-driven analysis. Um, so right now, we have a fertility app, a pregnancy app. We're working on a uh, postpartum and early childhood tracking app, um, and then after, yeah, that's right. <laughs> And then after that, we're going to have a, uh, a, a general health tracking app um, relying basically on the same technology, um, but just giving people advice that's specific to their time in the journey. That's right. That's exactly right. I mean, specifically, we say, based upon what you've shared with us, um, you, you might, the, like, your data suggests this, you should consult your physician about this. Great question. Great, thank you. <laughs>